Hello and welcome to this short revision video which is going to look at whether the collapse of the Grand Coalition was caused by the Economic Depression, an event which was outside of Germany's control. You'll notice that I've just highlighted some key terms and especially in quite a wordy question like this one, if you're asked it in the exam, it's worth breaking the question down. So circle key words, uh, have a really good think and annotate the question before you start to plan and answer it. Make sure you're answering the question you've been asked, not one which was similar that you've answered before or what you think you've been asked. So the collapse of the Grand Coalition was caused by the economic depression, something which was outside of Germany's control. So the Grand Coalition was the sort of moderate coalition, uh, or moderate coalitions that we'd seen uh, working in the Weimar Republic in its early years, especially un under Stressman. Uh, so more moderate parties like the Centre Party, the DMVP, etc. This collapsed in March 1930 when we see the rise of more right-wing parties like the um, NSDAP or the Nazi Party as they later became known. And we're trying to analyse whether this collapse of the moderate parties and move to more extreme right-wing parties and left-wing ones was caused by the economic depression, something that was outside of Germany's control. For the purposes of this revision video and in general, I would argue that um, in, in a way, yes, the depression was a cause of uh, the Grand Coalition collapsing. However, it wasn't outside of Germany's control uh, and it wasn't the only reason. So let's start by acknowledging how um, the collapse of the coalition of the moderate parties within the Reichstag was partly caused by the economic depression. We can see it because the Wall Street crash caused America to withdraw the loans that they had given to Germany. So um, during the, the Doors plan, America had lent millions to Germany to help them to continue to pay reparations um, which had really supported Germany in many ways. Uh, it caused the, them to be able to uh, fulfil many of their promises about reparations to countries like uh, France and Belgium. As a result, many of the troops had been withdrawn from the Ruhr and the Rhineland. Uh, it was great. Um, and whilst Germany was doing really well, uh, people supported the more moderate parties. They didn't feel the need to support extreme parties. But um, as a result of America withdrawing these loans from the Doors plan, it was very difficult for the moderate parties that were in the, the coalition in the Reichstag at the time to really agree what they were going to do because huge numbers of unemployed um, were, well, there were huge numbers of unemployed people as a result of the economic depression after the Wall Street crash. Not everyone really knew what to do about this because ordinary policies to support the welfare of people who were unemployed weren't going to work because there weren't enough employed people to support uh, the number of unemployed. Not all parties would agree what to do. Traditional moderate parties, uh, normal policies wouldn't work with this number of unemployed. Industrial production was falling 58% um, less than it was before. A third of German workers were declared unemployed, especially white-collar office workers who traditionally would have supported more moderate parties and farmers. And this also led to a lot more crime, especially from the young unemployed. Theft was high, it was diff very difficult for the government to deal with, and there was a rise at the time in recruitment from extreme parties like the KPD, the Socialist um, or sort of Communist Party, and the NSDAP, the Nazis. It was very hard for the other parties to stay in power. So yes, in a way, you could argue that without America withdrawing its loans, um, it's likely that the Weimar Republic would have got by and that other effects like the rise of extreme parties wouldn't have occurred. So in a way, yes, the depression caused it and that was partly outside of Weimar's control. However, there is a flaw in this argument. Um, the economic crisis within Germany was partly also caused by Stressman's economic policies. The Doors plan was just a short-term cause of the coalition collapsing. Uh, it was the only way that they'd been able to pay reparations uh, once loans were withdrawn, hyperinflation ensued. So if Stressman had come up with a longer-term solution, um, then you could argue that there wouldn't have been an economic crisis in the same way. The Doors plan was the major way that he uh, prevented or stopped hyperinflation. Um, Stressman had also signed the Young Plan with America as well. 
Um, and he'd agreed that, that Germany would continue to pay reparations until about 1988. Um, and although the bill was reduced, um, it shows that Stressman had actually accepted the reparation costs that Germany was going to have to pay. He didn't continue to fight them. So you could argue, in a way, it wasn't entirely outside of Germany's control um, that their economy was being um, damaged. Stressman had created a new currency, the Rentenmark, in 1924, which had helped to stop uh, hyperinflation previously. Um, so he was capable of managing the economy. The fact that there was an economic crisis in Germany wasn't entirely outside of Germany's control. It wasn't just America that caused it. Um, and as a result, you could argue that the collapse of the coalition wasn't entirely outside of Germany's control. Um, so without the Doors plan, Germany wouldn't have been reliant on America, therefore the depression wouldn't have affected them. However, Germany didn't have much choice. It was a short-term fix that had allowed the Golden Age. Therefore, it was a significant cause. Um, it wasn't quite as important as the depression. Um, as if this hadn't occurred, it's unlikely the USA wouldn't have asked for their money back all at once and then Germany wouldn't have been affected. An even more significant reason that uh, the moderate Grand Coalition failed was actually the nature of Weimar's constitution itself. Um, Article 48 being built into the constitution meant that there was always a possibility that the constitution, or sorry, the uh, coalitions would fail. Uh, the president had the right, if he declared that there was some kind of emergency, to use emergency powers to pass any laws he wished without the Reichstag's consent which really undermined democracy. And it was Hindenburg and his chancellor, who he'd selected, Bruning, both of whom were actually opposed to democracy. Both were um, previously sort of included in uh, the army. They were army generals. They were aristocratic in their background. They didn't really support democracy in the first place. Once they were involved in um, the running of Weimar, they had access to Article 48, and Weimar's constitution enabled them to use emergency powers. Uh, Hindenburg used Article 48, which really undermined the work of the more moderate parties uh, within the Reichstag who hoped to use democracy to, to make changes. He used Article 48 because he claimed that it was impossible for him to pass laws because there were too many disagreements within the coalitions, the moderate coalitions that he'd seen. Yes, true, there had been 23 cabinets, 1919 to 1930, and only six of the 23 cabinets actually ever had majority support, and it did make it difficult to pass laws. However, um, there had been um, a lot of time before Hindenburg and Bruning had got into power where Weimar had successfully passed laws um, and made changes without needing to use emergency per without using to emergency powers. The fact that Hindenburg used Article 48 was a real sign that democracy was already failing before um, the economic crisis caused by America's Great Depression. The nature of Weimar's constitution made it very easy for Hindenburg to argue that there was a need for emergency powers. The number of coalitions that have been failing, on, I mean, a really good example is um, a government collapsing over a dispute over what should be on Weimar's flag in 1919. There were lots of weak coalitions. It was easy for Hindenburg to claim that there was a reason he needed to use his emergency powers. I would argue that Weimar's constitution um, was weak um, and the proportional representation made it easier for the president to justify the use of emergency powers which meant that moderate parties were never really going to stay in the Reichstag in the longer term. I would also argue that the collapse of the moderate coalitions wasn't entirely outside of Germany's control. Yes, the economic depression triggered a rise in support of the more extreme parties but this was partly due to the more moderate parties not really dealing with or working together efficiently with each other, not to deal with those problems that existed as a result of the Depression. Two out of five votes went to anti-democratic parties after the Depression, and it was probably, yes, partly caused by the Depression, but it just reflected the fact that people felt that the moderate parties weren't actually 
dealing with the problems at hand. They felt that only more extreme solutions could make their, their country better at this point. The voting of these extreme parties into power was actually not outside of Germany's control. It was a decision democratically made by Germans themselves. Once elected Nazi party members um, in 1930, 107 of them, the second largest party in the Reichstag, deliberately disrupted meetings by heckling and shouting over them. It made it impossible to reach solutions to the depression's problems. Um, they could pressure for use of Article 48 again. Um, and because the Reichstag was being overruled by Article 48, a mistake made by Germans using the Reichstag and the, the constitution that they had, um, the Reichstag itself became less important. The depression was significant in causing problems because it amplified existing feelings that the Weimar Republic was unable to deal with problems uh, that already existed, hence extreme parties on the rise. But I think it's very clear that actually the nature of the constitution itself uh, enabled the extreme parties to get themselves into a position of more power than perhaps they otherwise would have been, and that that really was the cause of the collapse of the coalition, not the depression on its own. So yes, the collapse of the Grand Coalition was partly caused by the economic depression, but it wasn't entirely outside of Germany's control. Germany chose to elect more extreme uh, parties. Germany chose to adopt a constitution which had uh, elements of undemocratic things within it, like Article 48. Um, Germans chose to elect Hindenburg as president, um, a right-wing, anti-democratic individual. So whilst the economic depression did uh, amplify existing feelings that Weimar, uh, was, the Weimar Republic was unable to deal with problems, um, it wasn't something, the collapse of the Grand Coalition wasn't something entirely outside of Germany's control. That's the end of this short revision session. Best of luck with your revision.